Hi, everybody. This is A Wee Bit of Alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to discuss the path of least resistance. And this is something that is kind of permeates everything in nature. That is, anything, anything that's flowing, let's say water, air, lava, whatever, it's going to flow in a, in a direction that kind of lends itself toward the path of least resistance. So let's say water, if it runs up against the wall, it's not going to go through the wall ordinarily. It'll go around the wall unless it becomes, you know, the, the water's of sufficient volume, in which case just going through the wall is the path of least resistance at that point because there's so much water behind it, it just keeps keeps coming. So the idea there is that any fluid is going to follow the path of least resistance. And so it's going to it's going to flow. It's going to going to go in whatever direction is determined by that. And in your body, you the chi follows the same kind of idea. That is, it the the flow there is following the path of least resistance. And if we start with the basic assumption that health and happiness is directly related to how much chi you have and is it flowing properly and that's kind of the principle of chinese medicine and chinese martial arts is you know do you have lots of chi does it flow flow uh, efficiently and smoothly through the system so our bodies are oftentimes kind of this jumble of of knots and tightnesses and and kinks in the hose that that limit our uh, our chi flow. So the energy has developed sort of patterns over the uh, decades where it kind of it doesn't go to smoothly to all the places you want it to go, particularly into your brain. And so the um, that's why we do the jade pillow gate exercises where we open up that jade pillow gate, the base of the skull, tuck in the chin and allow the chi to go into your brain and and be able to uh, have that move more more freely. So with the path of least resistance, what we're trying to do is establish structures that allow the energy to flow where we want it to flow. The energy is going to follow the path of least resistance. So if we establish structures that allow it to flow where we want it to flow, then we optimize that that capacity to use the energy and to circulate it throughout the whole system. So a lot of what the Chinese internal martial arts is about, and plus qigong, and and a lot of the exercises is is about doing that very thing, like creating structures that allow the energy to go where we want it to go, or where it's more optimally expressed. So. Our uh, intent then is to recognize the structures, notice where we're kinking the hose, and iron out those kinks and allow the energy to move more freely. And uh, then we can, by tapping into the big chi through our central equilibrium and you know, energetic coherence, we can we can then amplify the available chi in the system. And so that we can then use our minds to direct the energy, or we're not even actually directing the energy. We're, what we're trying to do is establish structures so that we don't have to do that. The energy just flows because this is where we've already done the work by establishing the structures. So we don't have to say, chi, go over there. It's like, no, no, I just create this structure. And if there's ample chi in the system, then it wants to go, it wants to follow the path of least resistance. So being mindful of this quality and prioritizing it in your practice means that you don't have to work very hard to get the energy to move it just it it does it because you've created the structures so lately we've been doing uh, some work with 
Bagua energy exercises to kind of create some different structures for for the the body mind to kind of get familiar with. Oh, hey, that's kind of neat. That that amplifies it the chi in a way that I hadn't thought of before. And so you get to you get to explore that kind of energy, and um, you get it so that you know, you're you're not directly willing the energy to go any place. You're just saying, okay, I'm going to this place, holding these poles in opposition with my awareness, saying, oh, this and this, oh, they're two two separate things. And by having my mind on both of those simultaneously, I create a link there, an energetic link, which then creates this energy flow. If I do it, establishes a structure that is unkinked, then the energy flows more freely. So we're going to uh, we're going to do some of the Bagua exercises, and just as a, a reminder, I, I've gotten some feedback on, from YouTube that, like, you know, from some people who are like, "Hey, that doesn't look like the Bagua that I know," or "That's not what my teacher taught me." And uh, I, I, I get it. That's that's uh, it's not it's not what your teacher taught you. This is we're using Bagua type movements type postures in order to explore the energy. And so we're not, we're not, this is not doing a conventional Bagua form. This is a, just an energy exploration where we're getting into the, the nay gung of it. That is that, that inward practice that where we're recognizing our internal state and becoming very, um, I guess, mindful of, uh, uh, of the stuff that's going on there so much that you can actually get this, uh, you can derive a lot of joy from it. You know, William Blake said, energy is eternal delight. And uh, we kind of want to go that direction. So a lot of the problems that people have, you know, you know, sometimes people write me about like, you know, I'm so depressed. I got, you know, I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders. And it's like, yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's move in a different direction here where you're filling up so much with so much chi that they that the rising tide lifts all ships and you get uh, you just you you rise above those 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 things which feel so oppressive now just because you're expanding your own vitality to be able to to kind of roll with the punches this i think is the you know a major factor in why we study the internal arts and why we you know, we uh, approach it as a as a martial art as opposed to just uh just a, a meditation practice this is like no we're we're approaching is like we are being proactive in handling things and so just first thing though is to get lots of chi and circulate it well so once you stand up and we'll uh, we'll play around with some uh, some bagua energy exercises Okay, so let's begin uh, with our three pillars. We want to, you know, just uh, particularly for people who are just tuning in, the three pillars are central equilibrium, energetic coherence, and unkink the hose. And so we, what we want to do is amplify the available energy by tapping into the big chi the chi of the earth, the chi of the sky, the yin chi of the earth, the yang chi of the heavens. And we do that by, by aligning the, your structure in a way that we can go into resonance with those two poles. So go to the balls of your feet, unlock your knees and just feel your weight over the balls of your feet. Still feel the weight spread around your feet, but you want to have that your orientation point is the balls of the feet. Reach with the crown of your head, not the top of your head, but that, you know, the back part here, the upper back part where the hair whirl is. You reach up with that and tuck in your chin. So if you're, say your chin being out like this, you, you kind of open that up. So you're reaching up with the crown and tucking in the chin. 
So we have this, we have these two poles now, the negative pole in your feet, the positive pole in your head. And we're becoming like this big magnet where the we're plugging into the big chi. Reach out with your elbows. So we're unkinking the hose here at the shoulders. We do that point with your index fingers, and that gives us some energetic coherence that creates wholeness in the system. It also actifies the tensegrity of the connective tissue system. That is your that tensile strength that happens with your sinews, your tendons and ligaments and your fascia. And when you do that, you can immediately start to feel some, some activity in your hands when you make that connection. And you wanna release the hip joints so that we're opening the qua, the, uh, the energy gate there in your, in your hips, which allows the energy to flow north and south a lot better. You just want to hold that position for a moment and just plug into the big chi. So what it is we're filling up. We're filling up the tank before we even get started. As we want to get, you know, first of all, lots of chi, and then we want it to circulate it well. But by unkinking the hose, we did that with the jade pillow gate here at the base of the skull. We open up the open up the the, the connection between you know, the the occiput and your the back of your neck allow the chi to flow freely into your brain creating more jing shen the spirit of vitality so you're filling up with energy before we even get started And uh, just separate your feet just a little bit. And then, so we're going to generate some chi just very relaxedly. You kind of reach a little bit with your wrists. And as you do that, you pull back a little bit with your body. So your body is going back as your wrists are going forward. Notice that my fingers are just hanging. So my wrists are very, very relaxed right now. My fingers are pointing down toward the ground. And my elbows are out slightly from my, from my body. There's slight roundedness there, which opens the shoulder gate and allows the chi to flow freely in my uh, through my shoulder joints, through my elbow joints, and you feel it in your hands. And then Come back, pull back with your hands and your body comes forward a little bit. And so we're creating this, these poles in opposition between the body and the hands. And reach out with the wrist, go back with your body, go back with your heels as you reach forward with your, your wrists. And pull back. As you're pulling back, imagine that you're, you're kind of grasping with your fingers. You're kind of pulling in and your body comes forward as you pull back as you, as you pull back with your fingers. Right. Reach up with your wrists. Reach out with your fingers. Open. Reach out with your arm. Feel your shoulder blades opening up. So you're feeling a connection between the shoulder blades. You're feeling that, the, you know, from your spine, your shoulder blades, that space there is kind of opening up. And that, a lot, the tensegrity of that allows the chi to flow even better. And then press down with your hands. Just, just get down just about six inches. Just feel that, that pressing down and just pause there. And feel the resistance of the space as if you're pushing down on something viscous. Like maybe like you've got a beach ball here and you're pushing down into the swimming pool. 
You want to feel that and feel the chi in your hands as you do that. Continue to reach with the crown of your head, tuck in your chin, open the jade pillow gate, and just allow this energy to circulate throughout the whole system. And then press down. Now it's come down. Go to your heels. And just to let that get very yin. You feel that the energy going down, down, down. Feel yourself sinking into the earth. I want you to feel your bones as you do this. We're looking inward. We're we're ne shi. We're, we're this inward looking, and you want to feel and feel the substantiality of your bones, your arms, legs, your skull, your ribs, your spine, your pelvis. As we do that. Just being aware of that, feeling the bones, not just thinking about it, but feeling them. We, just by doing that, we bring more chi into the bones and into the bone marrow, which nurtures and supports our blood cells, the blood cells that are being manufactured in the, uh, in the bone marrow. It also supports your brain function just by feeling your bones and feeling the heaviness of your bones as they sink down as you're, you go very yin down into the earth. And then go into the balls of your feet, reach up with your wrists up to about chest height. And reach out with your fingers. Feel that your shoulder blades opening up. Now reach with your elbows and open very slowly, separating your hands as though you're pulling them apart. You're separating it, you're, you're feeling like rubber bands are between your fingers and they're, you're stretching them out as you, as you go. But your arms are very relaxed. As you do this, allowing the chi to flow. So getting the path of least resistance here. Feeling the energy circulating through your arms, through your fingers, through your shoulders, your back, your legs, everything. Just and just allow your awareness to go and just let go of any impediments that you find to allowing that energy to move. Uh, Press down with your hands, sink into your heels. Get very yin. Feel that sinking, feel into your bones again. Feel that the heaviness there. At the same time, you're reaching up with the crown of your head, connecting to the yang chi of the heavens. Even though like 90%, of your body is down, down, down. Feeling the substantiality of that posture. A step forward with your right foot, but take your time, just kind of really come up, bring your heel up. You wanna just feel sinking into your left leg Feel the support of that, the yin support of that left leg. You're not pushing away from the earth. You're going down into the earth and allowing the yin chi to come up. And then step out with your right foot. And just feel that separation there. You still have most of your substantiality in your left leg. Your right foot is occupying the space in front of you, but your substantiality of your right leg. So now we're going to feel the heel of your left foot, then the ball of your left foot, your hands come up, palms up, 
And now you're sinking into the right leg, releasing the quad, good. So releasing down, 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 drawing power from the earth and then reach forward with your fingers. Open. Your arms are super relaxed, but at the same time, they're reaching out. You can feel that the kind of tug on the connective tissue as you do that. Your muscles are so relaxed that you can feel the, you're stretching your sinews as you, as you do that, but it's a gentle stretch, just enough to get your, the energy circulating. Now feel the heel of your left foot and spiral down, go into your left leg, spiraling down to the right, and then reach up with your right hand. Don't worry about memorizing any of this stuff. This is, we're just doing a, we're doing an energy exercise here. So just follow along and just feel into it. The whole purpose of this is just to really fine tune your neishi, your inward looking. And then you gotta turn, and as you turn, you're pressing down with your left hand. Your right hand stays reaching up and out. Your left hand circles around. Notice how my arm is circled so that my thumb is pointing toward my navel as I do this. So feel a stretch, the, the rubber bands, energetic rubber bands between your right hand and your left. Notice how the elbows is, is relaxed. Your arm is extended, but, but elbows nice and, nice and supple as, as you're reaching out. And this is where you get to feel into your arms and say, oh, path of least resistance. This is an unusual posture for us. So just feeling that, just opening up your shoulder and reaching out like that is unusual for most people. Having your arm rotated like this, circled around like that, that's, that's a little unusual. So we're, we're reaching out and feeling the separation there between the hands, feeling the connection through the body through the connective tissue system. So you're, the, you're lighting up the whole connective tissue system as you do this. Feel the energy that's circulating in your arms and your legs as, we, as you do this. Now pivot on your right heel. Sink into your right. And bring your left foot around. So you're kind of making a circle. And so that your feet are now parallel and you're, you're facing toward the right now. And as you do that, you want to reach, reach through with your left hand and reach the other way with your right, but you're not collapsing them, you're, you're just going so that you're holding up a, um, a structure that allows the energy to move. Notice if I go too far, I collapse the, I collapse the field. I, no longer am I in control of the path of least resistance there. But here, I've got, I'm going, intending to go this way, intending to go that way, and that's creating a spiraling energy in my body mind as I do that. So I am just by creating this structure, this path, this, the structure which leads the energy where I want it to go. I have this, this, this thing. I'm going to keep turning so that I'm looking toward my back wall there. So notice how far I've turned. I've, I'm here like this. And I'm going, da, 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 da. I'm going, so there's, there's quite a rotation there that, that's going as I do that. So this is 
creating a different structure. I'm still reaching with my with my hands in opposite directions, and I but I've spiraled down and and turned as much as I can toward the toward the right. So this creates that spiraling energy throughout the whole system. This is something that is somewhat unfamiliar to our body minds and and it is very nourishing to explore this new energy. So now the left hand comes under your right armpit and your both hands come up. You just feel that to your left hand comes under the armpit and it kind of massages your right arm as it comes up and turn. And as you turn, you're rotating your forearms, pivoting on your left heel and bringing your right hand down. So remember your thumb is pointing toward your navel, your arm is rounded. So it's, notice how it's out away from my body. It's not collapsed like that. It's, it's like, and my left arm is very open. My shoulder's open. I'm reaching out with the heel of my hand. I'm, my weight's in my right foot at this point. I'm pressing down and out with my right hand. I'm reaching out with my left hand. I'm reaching up with the crown of my head. I'm sinking down into my, my right foot. And just feel the energy that's getting created by this odd structure. And just we're holding this for a moment. So just to notice that there is work being done energetically in your body mind to come to grips with the fact that, that you think that this is a good idea to do this thing right now. Like, really? This is what we're doing, huh? You know, it's a lot easier if I just sit in that chair over there. But no, we're going to do this instead. What we're doing, we're cranking up the chi. We're circulating it in a novel way. And now we're going to, we're going to reach under with the right hand and coming up, turn, pivot on your right heel. And we're going this way now. So you get to see my back, but the same idea here where, where the thumb is pointing toward my navel with my left hand, I'm reaching out with my right hand and opening the chest, opening the shoulders. Just doing that is very therapeutic, right, in and of itself. You're reclaiming lost territory when you do that. You can feel like a, it going down your arm and into your fingers. There's like there are connections that are have been dormant that are being awakened now as we do this. So then reach under your armpit with your left hand, reach up, turn, pivot on your right heel, pivot on your left heel and turn and open. Now we've been primarily focusing on the energy in your arms, but also become aware now of that spiraling chi in your legs. Feel that, feel that connection there. Feel the, the way that your body is, is aligning itself so that the chi that's moving through your legs is also creating some, some new pathways that, uh, that your, your body mind is trying to get familiar with. So that 
bring your arms down and step out to the side. <clears throat> now relax and just feel into this posture. So even though it's we're in a, in a, a stillness here, it's a very full and dynamic posture, reaching out with your elbows, reaching with your fingers, fingers are open, they're, they're expanding. Feel your weight center, go, uh, settle over the balls of your feet here to feel that yang expansion. Just become aware of the, the energy flowing throughout the whole system the sense of fullness that comes with that. Now go to your heels uh, and sink down. Feel the yin, feel releasing down. So we're creating a yin structure now, one that allows the chi to flow down, emptying out, throwing, it, throwing the chi away, allowing the yin chi of the earth to rise and fill. So we're not, even though we're throwing chi away, we're paradoxically filling up. It's a, it's an open system where the more we throw away, the more we get. Now go into the balls of your feet and reach with your wrists, relax your fingers, Reach out with your fingers now, open, feel your shoulders opening, your, your back opening, and then go to your heels and reach down with your elbows. And yin, 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 settle in. And step in. Take a deep breath. And disappear the chi. Go to your heels. Sink, sink, sink. Empty out. Let it go. Notice the more you empty out, the fuller you get as you fill with the nature chi. You don't have to store anything because your body is the, is the storage. It's the, your whole body is a battery. Every, every cell is a Dantian. Please have a seat. Peter. Yeah, so that was fascinating. Um yeah, I hung in there for most of it, and then I got a little bit lost. But I did experience, you know, some some feeling of chi and flow. And I have a question. Um, you know, what I'm getting is that the postures and the movements are a way of exploring uh, pathways in our energy body. Maybe something like the channels that that constitute that are a path of least resistance for the flow of for the flow of chi, and here and here's my question, because uh, we started, you know, the three with the three pillars connecting to the big chi. When we connect to the big chi, does the big chi does that connection to the big chi, uh, the big chi provide guidance in the process of 
uh, using the postures and the movements to to find the path, to find and co to connect to the pathways of least resistance? Is there a guidance from the big chi? My answer to that would be, if there's enough energy there. In other words, you have to, you have to crank it up pretty high to be able to, to have sufficient chi in the system to kind of be able to bounce against the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the chi of, 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 of the, uh, the universe around you. If you have insufficient chi, if your, your, your chi is collapsed, then, then the guidance is not going to be there because the you don't have a communication a firm communication line with it. So it, so from my perspective, it first you got to crank it up, and then then you get all the guidance you need because what's happening then is you are playing push hands energetically with life. That's yes, every, yes. With playing push hands with space, you're playing push hands with the air. Everything is like, you know, with with uh, with all the energy, it becomes, you know, when I said, you know, quoted Blake before, it's like, you know, energy is eternal delight. It's like, oh yeah, baby. It's like when you when you have sufficient energy in the system, then go for it. You know, it's uh, you will get you'll get tons of guidance from that. Scott, you're on, on mute. So going from uh, what Peter said there, um, as the chi cranked up, um, I got the guidance to kind of just pay attention to my spine. Mm -hmm. You know, just give it a little attention. Ooh, I had to back that off. <laughs> Ooh, that was like, oh my God. I mean, it was, you know, Lots. I was 11 going on 12. I mean, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's it. Gradually yeah. upgrade the wiring. So, yeah. Because uh, yeah. that's but you're tapping into something there which is really important, and it's uh, well, it's it's also kind of advanced advanced stuff. It's like when we're actually directly contacting the channels that conduct the chi, you know, along the spine, and uh, that. Uh, uh, now again, it's some fun stuff. Yeah, there was that. definitely there was definitely a little bit of fear there. That was one of the reasons I backed off, but it was also yeah. a lot. It, there, 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 it's it's a lot, and uh, but if you if you approach it respectfully, then mm -hmm. uh, it will uh, it won't harm you. And I have to say, these postures just feel the posture just feels so good to just to just so them. expansive. Just it, it's like ah, open yeah. it. Yeah, my body just says, yeah, more, 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 more. <laughs> good. Good, good, yeah. good. Okay. Beautiful. Valerie. I was glad at the moment that you said um, something about reclaiming lost territory. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I have this little bit of thing in my shoulder, which you've helped me with in the past. And it, but you know, raises its little tense head every once in a while. And it was a good reminder to, yeah, yeah, just let that go. Um, and so that helped me at that moment tremendously. And I agree with him. I Last week and this week, I know it doesn't look like anybody else's bagua, you know, forms, but um, uh, yeah, crank up the juice, oh baby. <laughs> Baby, baby, oh baby! Yeah, <laughs> very, very cool. I have appreciated it a lot. Great, terrific, terrific, good, good. Everybody else? Okay, good. Yeah, so you're right. It doesn't doesn't look like it's not supposed to look like anybody else's bagua. It's just you know we're exploring these postures. Then you know if you anyone who does want to get into a more refined kind of thing, you're going to be able to take these energies and fill them into, you know, uh, some sort of conventional form, which is uh, will enliven that as well. So, um, but uh, I think that these are doing a lot of work for us. 
ones we got here. Beautiful. Nick. I just want to point out that part of what, especially those of us who are not Bagua practitioners are feeling that's really new is, you know, in most Taiji forms, one doesn't do much in the way of twist. And that's all that whole spi spiraling thing around twisting the spine. That's, it just wakes up all kinds of stuff that we're not used to using and it feels real good. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, the spiral is considered by some to be the most fundamental pattern in the universe. And by getting that and reacquainting yourself with that archetypal energy is, uh, it, it provides guidance. You know, it definitely takes us takes us to, to places both ancient and brand new. So that's kind of fun. Great. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank you, uh, producer. Thank you, Thanks, producer. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Maria. Love you guys. Love you. Bye-bye.